renewable energy in En-ROADS. We're already counting on a lot of growth of wind and solar in the baseline scenario. So it makes a big difference keeping coal and gas in the ground, reducing greenhouse gas emissions, reducing future temperature. We'll explore some of the other features regarding wind and solar in En-ROADS, but also see uh, how more growth and more other improvements such as in storage really make a big difference at reducing future temperature. Let's check it out in the model. So first, some of the graphs to show to, that show the remarkable drop in the cost of wind and solar in the past. Down here under model comparisons historical, one can look at for solar electricity, one can see from 1990 to 2000, the actual drop here in purple, data from the International Energy Agency and the International Renewable Energy Association. See that purple line and then from Lazard and more data going down here to 2019. And then the fit of the En-ROADS baseline because the En-ROADS starts in 1990. And then the economies of scale loops. There's a whole nother train on this. Bring that cost down, 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 down. One can also see history for primary energy demand of wind and solar, both of them together. The growth of wind in the 1990s through the 2010s, the growth of solar, particularly in the 2010s, compared against history. That shows some of the match to actual history. So the result is if we go here to primary energy demand, go down to renewable energy, the result is really inexpensive renewables that lead to this substantial growth throughout the rest of the century. Those low prices I mentioned are shown here. You saw them falling in green, but this continued low prices out through the end of the century for wind and solar, particularly relative to coal and gas in brown and in blue, are the main reasons why we see this growth in renewable energy primary demand going into the future. Now let's think about some of the dynamics that play out when we subsidize it or encourage it. So the main things that can be done um, when we subsidize it is we can subsidize it here. This one, of course, reduces greenhouse gas emissions and it also, and it reduces temperature 0.2 degrees from 3.6 down to 3.4. There are other things that can be done to change the future for renewable energy. I'm going to go back to the global primary energy demand for renewables. One can increase it even more by subsidizing, imagining a breakthrough in storage, how you store it so that if there's wind during a windy day or solar energy when the sun is shining, how to store some of that energy to be used at a different time. If it got a good bit cheaper, we'd see even more growth. So that increases the growth of renewable energy. One could imagine that as one Thing that improves it. The other would be complementary policies, such as electrification. If there's more electrification, then more of this renewable energy from wind and solar can be used in transportation. So you get a big benefit. I'm going to oil, reducing oil use a good bit by electrifying transportation that you get from wind and solar. There are several things that actually lead to good bit less renewable energy, going back to renewables here. And those, some of them would be competition, more nuclear, less renewables, more new zero carbon, less renewables. Those are two of the things that can drive it down instead of up. Overall, however, we're already counting on a good bit of renewables, significant growth through the end of the century, keeping coal and gas in the ground, reducing emissions. If we re increase them more, then we get even more of a contribution. 
there could be a they could be a very big important part of all the actions that come together to get us to well below two degrees. Hope that was helpful. Go get them. <laughs>